Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Would you, would you accept that Americans are extremely angry right now? Mm -hmm. okay. I, think, I think in general that's true. I, there's a lot of anger, more than I've seen. And you know, Bob, when you were, when you were in Vietnam and I was here uh, in the U.S., you know, we saw all this anger here. There was a lot of it then. But this seems to be a magnitude worse than what we experienced in the 60s. Or maybe I'm just forgetting how bad it was then, but that's, that's my sense of it. What do you think? Now, I, I totally agree, and I've got to throw this in. I, I'm going to give you a lot of credit. Uh, I wrote a book about my service in Vietnam, and I'm the most anti-war person you will ever talk to, and I absolutely give credit in the book to the people who resisted the war. It was an illegal war. It was the wrong war. We had no business doing it. And uh, if it was up to the Marine Corps, we would still be fighting. So let me throw that in. But let's go back to anger. Yeah. Uh, Americans are angry for three reasons. And that's not something you see discussed very much. But in the U.S. in the last couple of months, 46 million Americans have lost their jobs. Many of them have lost those jobs on a permanent basis. Now, even if the government is paying you 600 bucks a week extra, they, they have thrown in uncertainty into the mix, and you have to be angry. Uh, another issue, and that's something that, that very few people know or talk about, the lockdown is dangerous, and people die through suicide, or alcoholism, or beating each other up. Uh, because of the lockdown, the lockdown uh, is just or more deadly than the virus it has turned out to be. Man is a social animal. We need to talk to people. We need to mm -hmm. interact with people. We need to touch people just to stay sane. I didn't realize that until I was locked up for six weeks. Yeah, and I, I agree. Yeah, I, I had cabin fever, no question about it whatsoever, when I could get out and, and interact with people. I just went, wow, that's great. Now, one of the things that you and I have discussed before, the divide between rich and poor is greater in the United States than it has ever been. And I'm going to give you an example. If you go to YouTube, you can probably look it up and find it. A scientist did a study of two monkeys. He put them in the cages, and he taught them how to push a buzzer. And if they pushed the buzzer, they got a reward. So the monkeys both push the buzzer, and he gives each of the monkeys a slice of cucumbers, and the monkeys were just fine with that. They did another test, and, and the monkeys pressed the buzzer, he gave them each a grape, and the monkeys were fine with that. And on the third test, he gave one of the monkeys a slice of cucumber and the other monkey a grape. Now, what do you think the, the monkey that got the cucumber did? They might have gotten angry. I mean, if I were that monkey, I would want a grape, not a cucumber. He, he went crazy. He went crazy. Oh, he threw the slice of, 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 of cucumber at, at the guy who was doing the study. When you, when you watch it, so you go, holy cow, you know, if we're angry because of Bill Gates uh, trying try to lock everybody down, uh, there's a reason for it. They, now, yeah. 
Something that's very important, I've written about this before in the past. Would you agree that all countries have rich people? Absolutely. Okay, would you agree that all countries have poor people? Absolutely. Okay, the stability of a country is based on the size of the middle class. And the last 20 or 30 years in the United States has destroyed the middle class. So we still have rich people. We have a lot more poor people. We just don't have the middle class. The middle class has been wiped out through debt slavery. And you and I had talked a little bit about that book called Common Sense 2.0 that is subtitled Freeing Americans of, of Debt Slavery. I, I would highly encourage people to take a look at it on Amazon and read the book. Americans have been turned into debt slaves and they're angry. And, and strange enough, all of a sudden it makes sense for Americans to pull down a statue even if it lands on their head. I, I'm terrified by what I see. In, in 1968 and 1970, in, in the election, there were a lot of people who, who felt just the way you did, who were anti-Vietnam, mm -hmm. and they stood up and said, we're against the war. But the people now, they're, they're I don't know what a good term is, they're crazy. Uh, they have just flat lost it. And and in the book, Common Sense 2.0, the guy who wrote it, wrote it points out it doesn't get any better automatically. You either fix what's broken or it gets worse. And I think the instability in the United States is going to get a whole lot worse. Well, I don't see too many people even wanting to fix it these days. There's so much anger, Bob. And I, it, it, just, that, it just seems like uh, there's a lot of angry monkeys throwing cuc cucumbers around and pulling statues down and what have you. Um, what what are the, I mean, first of all, all of the policies that are put in, being put into place are exacerbating this wealth, uh, this, this difference between the wealth, uh, the people that, I mean, it's making the rich richer. Every time Jay Powell pumps more money into the system to try to fix COVID-19, COVID the stock market goes up. I mean, uh, how long can this equity market continue to rise is one question I would have for you. But... Um, do you see any sign that people really understand what you're talking about? No. Maybe some do. No. I, I think a few do, but not too many. We never hear this one about the wealth distinction, do we? On the mainstream media, anyway, we don't hear about it. I suppose because most of the anchors themselves are sitting quite well and enjoying the stock market going up and up. Yeah, absolutely. But here's the deal, and, and this is something that you and I had discussed in an email People have two alternatives right now. They can either invest in Hertz or they can invest in resources. And it is a measure of how insane our financial system has gotten that people run the price of Hertz stock up uh, to six bucks a share. When it's bankrupt. It's bankrupt, my and God. No, and no hope of recovery, basically. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, here's what's crazy. Now, I, I, I've been preaching for 15 years that we were headed for a depression. Well, the depression is here. Okay, the airlines are going to take years to recover. The, the car rental places are going to take years to recover. These guys are through, and, and the 20 and 30-somethings have taken their $1,200 going to take years to recover. The, the car rental places are going to take years to recover. These guys are through, and, and the 20 and 30-somethings have taken their $1,200, and, and they're throwing it at Hertz. Now, either the investors in Hertz are rational, and they're going to make money, or the investors in resource stocks are rational, and they're going to make money. I, I don't think there's any question. It, it's so easy now. It, if you can't see the dollar being destroyed, it, it's because you have your head up and locked. Now, I'll go you one better, and that's absolute proof. Do you have any idea what Donald Trump came up today and what, what he recommended 
uh, pals do? No, I probably print more money or negative rates or something like that. I mean, that's usually what he wants. Well, he thinks you take that. He wants to give everybody another twelve hundred bucks. Now, that's crazy. That is borrowed money. Okay, you can give Americans twelve hundred bucks now, but somebody's got to pay for it. So, literally, Americans are debt slaves. We're not only not doing anything about curing the problem; we're making it worse. So, so you know, Donald Trump is so eager to get reelected. He he wants uh, Congress to to give another twelve hundred bucks. I I see this as ending in utter disaster. Um, you're living in France now. Uh, the French Revolution comes to mind. There was. Um, do you see any similarities? Oh, with what's yeah, going on here? I mean, the French Revolution, eight, uh, 1789, was because uh, Louis XIII spent all the money uh, fighting the war against the English. It was called the American Revolution. And while it helped the American Revolution, it bankrupted France. And they had their one-tenth of one percent. There was about 30 million French people, and there were 32,000 aristocrats. Well, by 1793, I think there were something like 500 of the aristocrats still alive. Uh, the 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 ultra rich are making a terrible mistake because the anger is real and it's palatable and it's going to get worse unless we do something about it. Maybe they think they can. Uh, they have enough money that they can find themselves uh, a, a country of their own or carve it out, like they're like some of the Black Lives Matter people are trying to do in Seattle. Maybe maybe Nancy Pelosi and some of the people uh, that have tremendous, that are very wealthy people, extremely extremely wealthy people, figure that they can somehow carve out for themselves a safe a safe haven. But you don't well, think that'll work. Uh, that's a really good theory, and it's the same theory the aristocrats had, and the fact is, for most, most of them, it didn't work. Uh, we have an opportunity, we had the same opportunity in 2008 to fix the banking system, and we didn't do it. And mm-hmm. we have made it infinitely worse, and, and the rate of destruction has gone curve linear. And it's going to become more and more obvious every day the amount of destruction of the American financial system. Yeah, you know, um, we so there's there's a couple of issues then that you know the question is what how do we protect ourselves? How do we go about our own businesses? Middle class people, I, I certainly consider myself one of the few. You know, there's there's not a lot of middle class people left, but I think that I'm. Probably one of you know. I'm in that class. Uh, it's a it's a very small class now. But how do we protect ourselves? Those of us who aren't really really rich, but we're not poor either. How do we? What should be our strategy? Well, you should invest in something that's real. Now, I I'm convinced the banking system is going to go under. Mm-hmm. It is functionally bankrupt now. It is not a liquidity issue. It's a solvency mm-hmm. issue. And you could pour money onto a liquidity issue and solve the problem. But if you pour money onto a solvency issue, you haven't done anything at all. Uh, It's still very possible to invest in good, solid resource stocks. Uh, You and I mentioned off camera Irving Resources, and Mm -hmm. that's something that I followed for years and years and years. And that stock's up 13% today. To two dollars and ninety cents, uh, Irving Novo Lion One. There are dozens of high quality resource stocks that are going to get the benefit of higher prices for gold and silver. Paper assets are going to be destroyed. Bank accounts are going to be seized. Bonds are going to go to zero. Currencies are going to be an utter disaster area, and you've got to invest in something that's real and tangible, and it's going to exist in spite of a worldwide depression. 
well, something that holds its value. Uh, certainly, uh, starting with the monetary metals and gold and silver uh, w- would be the most logical place to start. You mentioned Irving Resources. They are a sponsor to this show, as is Noble Resources. Uh, but it, with regard to Irving, they, they were up a lot today, and I didn't have a chance to check the news. What, what uh, sort of transpired there? Okay. Uh, Irving has been working on picking up a project that's 11 kilometers or about six miles away from uh, Hishkari, which is the highest yeah. great gold mine in the world. And, and it's identical to Hishkari. It's been, in, it's been in the same wealthy Japanese family for hundreds of years. It's called Yamagono, and oh. they're doing a deal with the family uh, the family wants the project put into production. They're working on, on the terms for it, but it, it's a giant uh, home run for Quentin Henney and, and for Irving. Yeah, Quentin Henning, uh, also Novo Resources, and you know that is one that, of course, you and I were the early, you were the first, you were the earliest person to really talk about it. You've known Quentin for a long time. Uh, just an outstanding person, a very, very smart guy, very, very intelligent, very creative thinker, um, not only because of his uh, his geological expertise, his technical capabilities, but also his ability to think outside the box, a really remarkable scientist, isn't he? And what do you, just maybe fill, up, fill in our listeners about Novo Resources, because, I mean, he's the only guy, the only geologist that really could see the connection or the a similarity in the deposition uh, and the extent, extensive nature of this deposition in Western Australia that it, that is uh, akin to, in many ways, the great Whitwaters ran in South Africa. But talk to us a little bit about, bring us up to date on, on what's going on with Novo and um, what people should be really keeping their eyes on there. Well, strange enough, you, you stole my thunder. <laughs> I have actually started writing... Uh, the book that's going to be called What Happened to the Crow, that it's about the first uh, Pilbara gold rush in 1888. Uh-huh. And I, I talk absolutely about how the change in technology and thinking outside the box has turned this into what I believe is going to be the, the biggest gold project in the world. Now, I'm going to ask something funny. Take, take a wild stab, okay? Western Australia is the largest exporter of iron ore in the world. Uh-huh. How much as a percentage of world production does Western Australia, all by itself, what percent of world production do they contribute? I'm not sure, but it must be very large. 39%. Wow, okay. 39% percent of the entire world. Now, here's where it gets beautiful. The the iron ore, uh, it's both magnetite and hematite, and it all comes from something called a banded iron formation. Now, Mm -hmm. do you have any idea of how a banded iron formation is formed? Uh, Fill me in, Bob. The iron precipitates out of salt water in the presence of of oxygen. Oh, now, if you have the largest, the world's largest iron ore deposit where the mineral precipitated out of salt water in the presence of oxygen, uh, why wouldn't gold do exactly the same thing? And if you got the world's largest iron deposit, why wouldn't you have? the world's largest gold deposit. Yeah, and that's exactly, that was the precipitation uh, idea, was, was what Quentin Henney came up with and, uh, and why he was led to, uh, to this area. And he was looking for a, a large, shallow marine environment, ancient marine, and the rocks had to be of the right age, when oxygen started to be formed through photosynthesis, right? All that had to come together, and that right. led him to this area. So I, I yeah I hadn't uh, I hadn't put the two together the precipitation event for iron and uh, the banded iron formations interesting yeah well it is interesting and literally Quentin Henney 
was the first guy to realize all the gold in Western Australia, or at least in the Pilbara Basin, got there exactly the same way. The so same way. It, it's a, a fabulous story. He keeps adding to the story. It, it's more and more interesting. He obviously is working on getting the mill uh, at Millennium. And Quinton has always wanted to get into production, and they're going to get into production, and it will be the lowest cost gold in the world. Well, that's right, and that's we don't have time. I, I want to have you on again to talk more about that, Bob, because it is really an amazing story, and the, the mechanical separation and so forth that comes into play. Actually, Quinton Henning may be with us next week. Um, uh, but anyway, that's that's uh, really all the time we have today, Bob. Thank you so much for being with us, and we. 